My name is Riku Paavola and I'm the station manager and senior researcher at Olanka Research Station. Right now I'm at the Pukoso Fen site, which is one of our two ecoclimate research sites. In this area, we have a lot of exciting new research. Uh, first of all, we have now continuous uh, methane and CO2 measurements started by Torben Christensen and his group from Aarhus University in Denmark. We have recently installed PAR sensors, which means photosynthetically active radiation. Also, we have installed a Trios Opus, uh, continuously measuring a DOC sensor at the nearby River Olankajoki. In 2021, we will be looking at soil qualities in more detail by doing a ground penetrating radar research survey on both of these sites. Plus, we recently got funding for some high quality equipment, which will let us look at multispectral uh, aspects of these research plots. This means we will get imagery and spectroscopy on ultraviolet, infrared and thermal ranges. This will be very exciting. And we will be very happy to incorporate new research projects and proposals. Recently, we have also started a deep collaboration with Aarhus University in Denmark, which means that Professor Torben Christensen will be sharing professorship between Oulu University and Aarhus University. Jeff Welker is continuing his extremely good work at Olanka, especially in the pine forest research uh, site, and he has a lot of uh, news to tell. Beautiful. We're also starting a new collaboration with Professor Hannu Fritze from Natural Resources Institute, focusing on microbial aspects of the experimental platform. An even more recent development is from the uh, Geological Survey of Finland, mainly with Jarkko Okkonen, and uh, they are now planning a new and deep collaboration with us. And carbon is the common thing in all of these projects and, and links. My name is Torben Christensen. I'm a professor at Aarhus University. I'm a, a climate scientist specializing in Arctic ecosystems. Here in Olanka, we are interested in the greenhouse gas exchanges in the ecosystems uh, that are holding a lot of carbon. Uh, there is about seven meters of peat that's pure organic, dead organic material, which is carbon stored here and we are interested in the dynamics and how well and stored that is if it may end up in the atmosphere and we're interested in comparing it to uh, sites we have in the high arctic where we are experiencing warming very rapidly and uh, we are then sort of wanting to compare this more moderately cold environment with the very cold uh, arctic and uh, look at differences and how the climate change is in fact progressing in the northern environment. Uh, the Ulanka research station is a perfect place for us to bring students to, to teach a future generation of researchers on the issues relating to carbon exchanges in high northern environments and uh, how that is interacting with climate change. So what we're installing here now is uh, equipment that can measure methane. Uh, methane as a very powerful greenhouse gas has not been measured in this uh, environment here, uh, this particular site before. 
And uh, there we have a fantastic opportunity in uh, the in surroundings here to measure uh, exchanges which we can p compare with what we have uh, in Greenland in the high Arctic in a much colder environment, but still comparable. There is a tremendous amount of carbon out there. We don't know what is going to happen with it in cl under climate change. And uh, there is enough to really influence the further development of climate. So uh, what we are doing here is simply trying to understand a lot of the processes that we don't understand. <laughs> I, I, I like to say that with the ecosystems and how they influence the greenhouse gas balance of the earth, we know that we don't know very much. And we would like to try and understand the systems better. And this is what we're trying to do here. My name is Lise Lotte Sørensen. I'm here in uh, Olanka to measure uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, and I mainly here measure the greenhouse gas CO2. And I'm doing that by putting up some instruments in the small masts. And I don't know if you can see the small mast behind me. And that's, um, that's going to be measuring over the winter. So we can see how the greenhouse gas or how the CO2 is released or taken up by the surface over the winter. The, the measurements we're doing here, it would be really great if we could have these type of measurements over several years because in that way we can actually see how climate is affecting the uptake of CO2 or the release of CO2 of course. So, uh, so that would be very valuable to, to our science. Another thing we're looking at is actually the energy budget. We also measure the energy, incoming energy and outgoing energy from the system. Um, to see how it affects the gre uh, greenhouse gases and how it affects the ecosystem in general. My name is Timo Motka and I'm holding a professorship in aquatic ecology at the University of Old. We mainly study benthic invertebrates in streams and rivers, but also other uh, organism groups like microbial organisms, bacteria, fungi, and then eventually also fish. Uh, we have been monitoring 24 headwater streams that drain River Oulankoluki and other large rivers in the area for more than 20 years now and that's pretty exceptional internationally. There aren't, aren't many corresponding data series anywhere. We study also microbial communities, particularly bacteria, and then the quality of uh, dissolved organic carbon that originates from the terrestrial ecosystem is a very important factor regulating bacterial communities. So that's the link to carbon. I am Maria Väisinen and I study carbon dioxide exchange in the surrounding pine forest. Here in Oulanka we have this experimental setup which is manipulating the depth of snowpack. Snowpack has uh, an important effect on soil microclimate during winter. When the snow is very shallow, soils are cold because there is no insulation by the snow. And these cold conditions in soil decrease carbon dioxide release because the plant roots and soil decomposer organisms cannot be active. But uh, once the snow becomes deeper and deeper, the more it insulates and the warmer the soil becomes. And these warm soils sustain high carbon dioxide release. This 
setup, which is next to me, these systems, boxes and tubes, they are measuring CO2 release from soil to atmosphere during winter. And with this system, we hope to also detect how differences in snowpack will impact on carbon dioxide release. We will continue these carbon dioxide measurements during winter, but also during summer. And ultimately, we will combine growing seasonal and winter carbon dioxide balances to get an annual carbon budget for this pine forest. Hi, my name is Gesche Blumeveri. I'm a plant ecologist, ecosystem ecologist, but I really try to figure out what the roots are doing. Um, and I think that's quite interesting because they're really hidden from our view and so we don't really know what's going on. Uh, and that is like the, the main goal of my research. So what we are trying to figure out in Ulanka is really how the changes in winter climate on the one hand, so more or less snow affect root patterns. But then also how does it change in herbivory? So if we have more or less reindeer grazing at the site, does that change how the roots react? One of the reasons why roots are not looked at that much is just because it's really difficult to see them. And one of the methods that I use in my research um, also in Ulanka is to use these so-called mini rhizotrons, which are transparent tubes that are being buried permanently in the soil. And then we have a, a scanner, a root camera that we can put in and then take pictures of the soil surface and the roots um, at, the, at the tube. And with that, we can actually go back over time to the same spot, observe the same roots and see when the production is taking place. Is it more in early summer or late summer or during midsummer? Um, is there any production over the winter? Does it change with, for example, less snow, we have deeper roots or more shallow roots? Uh, and that's really one of the really nice things um, with these mini rhizotrons because they allow us to look below ground. Plants are generally really important in the carbon cycle because they are kind of the, the pathway. So they take up carbon from the atmosphere through photosynthesis and then store it in their biomass and then also eventually it uh, ends up in the soils. Um, and that's why the roots are really important in that cycle. So my name is Hannu Martila. I'm an assistant professor. I'm researching catchment hydrology in the northern environment. So one of the key hydrology components is the groundwater. And understanding of the groundwater cycle and the processes and groundwater levels, we need to drill groundwater wells. So we need wells to, to monitor the fluctuation of the water table during the different seasons because the groundwater is also an important carbon source in the, in the landscape and quite of, often it's ignored in the, in the calculation. So in Oulanka, we want to now quantify the carbon which is coming also from the groundwater sources to the, to the, to the rivers. So far, there hasn't been any groundwater research, research done in Oulanka. So this is the one of the first studies done in this region. It's like a missing link at the moment. Next steps in the future is that we are starting to build the groundwater model to the, to the site, which is giving us the possibility to, to not only to model the groundwater movement, but also to study to predict the future. So with the modeling we can see the future and then with the, with the understanding of this hydrologic cycle we can then also start to understand that how does it affect on the car carbon cycle in these las landscapes. Mm -hmm. 